Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I'm here to introduce Governor Martin O'Malley, who is a very good friend and an exceptional leader. In the last 20 years of my involvement in the politics, I have worked with several politicians, but yet to find a genuine leader like Governor O'Malley. He started his political career as a councilman in Baltimore City. In 2000, he became the mayor of Baltimore City and re-elected again in 2004. He became the governor of Maryland in 2006 and was re-elected in 2010 as a governor. His accomplishments are a lot, but few noteworthy are he took fight against NRA and banned assault rifles in Maryland. He passed the DREAM Act to help the immigrant children, made schools number one in country and freeze college tuition. He raised minimum wages and many other things to help the environment in Maryland. But the things which stands out about Governor O'Malley is his engagement and empowerment of the Muslim community in Maryland. He opened the governor mansion for iftar reception and made history. And then he had eight consecutive, as he was in the governor's office, iftar reception at the, at the governor's mansion. He formed the historic Middle Eastern Commission to have, to have Muslim a voice in the Annapolis. He appointed 50-plus Muslims to various states' boards and commissions. He appointed the first Muslim secretary to his cabinet. He elevated a Muslim judge, Hassan al-Amin, from district court to circuit court. And he visited in his term, two terms in the, as, a, in, as a governor, to three Muslim countries. As a candidate for the United States president, he was a voice for the Muslim community against the onslaught of the Donald Trump. Two things stands out which I could never forget. When Donald Trump, during the presidential election, said that he is going to put a complete shutdown of Muslims coming to the United States, Governor O'Malley was in San Francisco. He took a red eye and came to Adam Mosque on the Friday for the Friday prayer and showed the solidarity with the Muslims. And again, when Donald Trump put travel ban 1.0, he was in Iowa. He took the leadership from Iowa, went to the mosque in, in Iowa, which is the historic, the first mosque in the United States, and he recorded a message to support the Muslim community. I wish and hope he run again in 2020. Please welcome a true friend of Muslim community, Martin O'Malley. So on behalf of the Islamic Circle of North America, we would like to present this very prestigious award. And we are very grateful for the governor to really be accompanying us today. And we thank him. We thank him for his services uh, to the community. So and the award reads, Islamic Circle of North America on the 43rd, 43rd Annual ICNA Mass Convention presents Governor Martin O'Malley in honor of your dedicated service and unconditional support in upholding the constitutional freedom and civil rights for all. Thank you, Governor. Hey, thank you. Thank you. I had no idea I was getting an award. Oh, thank you. Here we go. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Can I, can I, thank, thank you. Assalamu alaikum. It is a great honor to be here with all of you. I had no idea this Catholic boy at Easter time was getting an award from the Islamic Circle of North America.
President Siddiqui, thank you very much, and thank you all for traveling to Baltimore. I know that many of you have come a long way. And uh, first of all, giving, giving honor to God, the all-merciful, the all-compassionate, I welcome you from the highest rank that we have in the city of Baltimore, that of the rank of citizen to Baltimore, land of the free and home of the brave. You're all very, very welcome. As I, as I traveled here today from a much shorter distance than many of you have come, my, uh, my heart um, thought about this moment in time that we as a people are journeying through together. As Americans and as people on this planet, uh, I think it is safe to say from an American perspective that our country has never needed us as citizens more than she needs us now to step up, to speak out, to defend the timeless human values, values that we share as sons and daughters of Abraham that are also at the core of the American Revolution and the character of what it means to be an American, to be compassionate, to be generous, to understand that our diversity is our strength, that we are all in this together and that we must help each other if we are to succeed. I um, have been doing a lot of reflecting during this uh, period in my own faith, which we call Advent. I read the Book of Lamentations, and from the Book of Lamentations, I learned that we must allow ourselves to grieve as God grieves allow our hearts to be broken as his heart is broken by the things that break his heart, things like a people turning away. And in that understanding, I think we come to appreciate our common humanity. I think we are able to grieve with mothers of all faith for the loss of sons and daughters to violence. I think we are allowed to grieve with all people when their own nations fall short of the principles of humanity and dignity that we are all called to. It is true, I think, at least over the longer arc of history and the longer arc of justice, that humanity bends towards the compassion, the generosity, and the love of God. But in our own time, sometimes in the face of Muslim bans, in the face of immigrant roundups, in the face of the denial of science, in the face of the denial of individual rights, it's easy sometimes to grieve even for our own country. But I have some good news to share with you, and that good news is this. I have traveled all across our country over the course of the last year, and uh, while I am not a candidate for public office, many other people all across our country are, and they are entering that arena of public service. They are stepping up against the dark backdrop of national politics in our country, and they are offering a more compassionate way forward. And they are people that reflect the great diversity, the great hope, and the great generosity that is the future of the United States. Let me share just a couple of brief stories. Over the course of the last year, there have been some 44 special elections for state legislative offices, for Senate, and for State House. And of those, Democrats have prevailed in 38 of the 44. You know, sometimes as I wake up early to go out and board a pre-dawn flight on Southwest Airlines to fly off to the middle of our country or someplace to campaign for a candidate, my wife has said, why do you keep doing this for people you don't know? And I tell her, because it feels a lot better to do something for my country than to be angry at the television. And so I keep doing it. Washington State. A woman named Mankra Denkra. Mankra had about $6 million thrown at her. The outcome of her race would determine whether or not their state Senate flipped from Republican to Democratic or stayed Republican. Mankra prevailed in that election. She prevailed by a healthier margin than anybody thought. 
Second story, on the other side of our country in New Jersey. Vin Gopal won a Senate seat in New Jersey that hadn't been Democratic for a long, long time. Uh, in district, after district, there has been about a 15 to 20 point swing. And as I've asked the candidates who are running for these office, what are they hearing? And what are they saying? They hear the same level of economic anxiety. Will I be able to do better by my children than my parents did for me? But the response to that is not a response of, of anger, not a response of tit for tat, but instead our candidates are answering with messages of solidarity, that we're all in this together, whether we're Democrats or Republicans or independents, we have to listen to each other. We have to realize that we all want the same things for our children. All across the United States, if you want to know where our country's headed, listen to the attitudes of our young people under 25. For you will rarely find among them people that deny science or think that climate change isn't real. You will rarely find among them immigrant bashers, and you will rarely find among them any young Americans that believe that we should have a Muslim travel ban. Final story. Final story. One young man I had the honor to campaign for was not running for state senate he was not running for state house. But he was a young Muslim American man, very young in fact, and his name is Hassan Essa. And Hassan came out of nowhere. Young man defeated the uh, likely nominee and rallied people, excited people. Now he fell this short to winning a race for aldermen in the city of Manchester, New Hampshire. But Hassan Essa, I believe, will be back. And so will so many other young people, like the young people you saw in the march just last week for the march to ban combat assault weapons and... and <laughs> you want to know where America's headed? You talk to young people like Hassan Essa, they will tell you where America is headed. They will tell you that we are going forward and that we are going forward together. The, um, as I talked to Hassan, I said, you know, being in Manchester, I wouldn't imagine you run into many Muslim Americans. He said, no. He said, well, what do you tell people when they ask you about your name, Hassan Essa, and where you come from? I tell you that, he says, I tell them that my name is Hassan, Essa, and Essa means Jesus. I have come across in my travels a woman named Jordan Denari Duffner, and she's written a beautiful book. It's called Finding Jesus Among Muslims. And she writes in one part, the Christian historians believe that the recitation of God's beautiful names also impacted the famous St. Francis of Assisi who had his own personal encounter with Islam during a stay with the Muslim Sultan Malik al-Kamil in Egypt in the 13th century. And shortly after their encounter during the Crusades, St. Francis wrote a prayer called the Praises of God, which reads in part, you are holy, Lord, the only God, and your deeds are wonderful. You are strong, you are great, you are the most high, you are almighty. You, Holy Father, are King of heaven and earth. You are beauty. You are gentleness. You are protector. You are our guardian and defender. Great and wonderful Lord, God Almighty, merciful Savior. Scholars believe that St. Francis Catholicism's most famous saint was deeply faith, shaped spiritually by his experience and his exposure to Islam. We are all called at this holy time to realize and to remember that we are all sons of Abraham and daughters of Abraham. And as Americans, we are also called to remember that our country is based 
on a belief in the dignity of every individual, on a belief that we all share a common good, on a belief that our freedom to express ourselves and to praise God in our own ways is among the most fundamental of freedoms, what it means to be a free human being and what it means to be an American. God bless you all.